Hello. Oh my goodness, my voice is going. Hello and welcome to another episode of Diversity, Inclusion, Compassion, Kindness, and Comics. This is another, you know, holiday type episode. Uh, I'm not going to really review a comic this week. What I'm going to do is um, I want to give away, I have to get rid of a bunch of stuff. Um... I, I'm, I am uh, too much. Too much comics are accumulating. I'm a guest in my sister's home, and she's telling me I got to get rid of this crap. So I'm gonna just give a big pile of these Superman action comics. There's the, from like 1984 to 1986. There's like a 20 issue run, and some Legion. And I got a bunch. Oh, I got an extra one of these. You could have that too. So basically. I'm going to do a giveaway. I only think of a contest in the meantime. But I'm in a very holiday happy mood because um, I took my nieces to the Roosevelt Field Mall today to see Santa Claus. And we had a fine time. The only thing said was uh, Santa called me over to take a picture. He said, oh, why don't you come take a picture, sir? And I said, absolutely not. I am not going to take a picture with Santa. And then and be in a picture with Santa where Santa is the you know, the, the second heaviest person in the picture. It's just not a flattering look to look bigger than a guy shoved, you know, with pillow shoved in his shirt. Plus he said, oh, he, he wanted me to sit on his knee. And um, I'm not going to live with the guilt of, of uh, carrying around the sound of that poor teenager's uh, femur snapping beneath my ass as I sat on him. I don't, I don't want to carry that around with me for the rest of my life. So I did not sit on his leg. I'm sure it would have <clears throat> shattered into stardust if I put my full weight onto it. So, but I am in a Santa mood and uh, I want to give away some comics. So I'm going to think up a way. I'm also in a good mood because, well, I was in a bad mood before because when I took my nieces to the uh, mall, I had to take them there. The only car that was available was the Hyundai that I absolutely refused to to drive. I, you know, because I said, uh, I said, uh, oh, only a farm animal should have to drive that car. But then I have actually seen uh, some polo trailers where they carry horses, which are much, which are much nicer than uh, the Hyundai. So I wouldn't even say a farm animal. I would say I had to drive to that mall in that Hyundai. I felt like a a Kazakhstani turnip farmer. That's probably who would be used to drive it. But I drove it. <coughs> I'm a big boy, so I uh, I powered through, and we had a fine time at the mall, and we met Santa, and I picked up some comics, and it was fun. So it was, and I'm also when I got home, my my brother-in-law was very uh, in a gracious mood, and he, well, you know, he's also being a little bit of a wise guy, but. He had this beautiful bottle of uh, Four Roses 50th Anniversary Small Batch Bourbon. Now, I don't know if you're aware of the... That's about a $500 bottle of bourbon. So he started pouring, and I started drinking. Because, it, you know, you don't say no when somebody opens a bottle like that. So I, uh, I drank as many as I could before he noticed and put the cap back on. But he did let me take the uh, bullet, which I'm going to have a few more pops. Why not? But then I said to him, you know, can I grab a bottle of your red wine? I need a bottle of red wine to go to sleep. The bourbon doesn't put me down, but a nice bottle. So he's been a, a real wise ass. This is, this is, you know, I, this is him because I bought a tree stop, you know, the tree topper, the angel. I bought one this year because it was a Hillary Clinton as the angel. It was adorable. It was in good fun. It was, he said, absolutely not. He said he wouldn't even have it. And he said, there's no way you could put that on. The tree, on the tree. So I was very upset. So, I, you know, I had a little argument with him. He gave me the bourbon. I settled down. But then I asked, hey, can I have a bottle of wine for later so I can sleep? And do you want to see what this wise guy, wise guy gives me? Can you believe this? Hold on. He gives me a bottle of Trump. Like I would ever drink this. He knew. The sad part is I have absolutely no willpower and I will probably be drinking that bottle of wine later if that's my only choice. But I mean, he just gets a, he gets a sick satisfaction of seeing me. Well, either way, I was thinking about the other day I, I said to how to make a very strong, um, a very strong eggnog where you put mostly booze and then you put, you know, some, uh, some eggnog 
lightly on top of it. And then it would look like, you know, it's a regular eggnog, but it's very strong. I found out a way to make an all bourbon eggnog. Here's what you do. You pour full glass of bourbon. And then you never add this. You get rid of it. Who needs it? I mean, it's a tasty treat on its own, but like it's just going to ruin the booze. So what you do is a lot of times they serve eggnog in these things, which is a little decorative eggnog. You pour that into there and uh, you put the cap on. You get a straw. And you're good to go. I mean, you could drink straight bourbon all night and just tell people, hey, oh, I'm having an eggnog. Oh, no, maybe I'll put a little in it. I didn't put anything in it yet. But, you, you know, then you open it up. Look what you got. A delicious, tasty drink. So I'm going to pour this back. Oh, shit. Hold on. Paper towel time again. Okay, I'm back. I cleaned it up. Although the skirt of that tree is going to stink a little bit like booze. Hopefully... No one will notice that. Okay. So what was I going to do? Oh, also I was in a good mood because I picked up a, a, a fun holiday sweater, which I'm wearing. I'll turn the camera around on myself uh, for a, a bit of a reveal, but not a face reveal because uh, never mind. But um, I bought a Captain America Christmas sweater at the mall and I thought it would be fun. And what happened was, I didn't think it has its face on it. And I didn't realize, you know, my stomach has gotten so big that if you know, like Silly Putty, when they used to put it, if you put it on the comic and then you could stretch the face out, that's kind of what happened with, I'm going to turn around and hopefully I don't do a face. This is, it just doesn't look right. He's, his face is all distorted. It's stretched out. Yeah, I've, got, I've become gigantic. So... Uh, it's a fun holiday sweater, but it's really just, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've completely destroyed my physique. I used to be, uh, actually quite skinny before Trump won, and, uh, I became devastated and a compulsive eater, but I've always had a compulsive personality. I mean, I mean, my whole career, the, the job I was fired from was really based on, uh, my compulsive com I, I used to be, I, I got into it in one of my other videos. I used to be in a cu currency exchange, mostly um, Asian markets. But uh, a lot of my job was um, entertaining, you know, whales. Now I'm a whale, but we called the whales the big clients from, you know, Japan, China, uh, Hong Kong. We have, you know, English, European clients also, even some Arab but I used to be the go-to guy, you know, I was the guy in my 30s, I grew up in the city, I knew every single, uh, oh, Jesus, oh, I knew everybody in the city. I knew every uh, stripper, every doorman, every drug dealer, every bartender in town. So I was the guy that was in charge of taking people out. And I got, you know, I went into a career that I probably, you know, my father was very much, he was a very successful uh a uh, Wall Street trader, and uh, he was, I can't get, really get too personal about that, but he was big, he got me my start, I made a tremendous living, but the lifestyle got the best of me, you know, um, you know, it was a, uh, let's see, uh, a regular week for me would be, you know, tons of drinking, you know, and then also, you know, the, the normal regular run of the mill you know, I didn't take heroin or anything like that, but I would definitely take yeah, cocaine, ecstasy, mushrooms, acid, peyote, GHB, <clears throat> basic, you know, runny the mill stuff, but I was doing it all week. I got into a little bit of trouble one night when I was doing uh, heavy drinking and then somebody offered some ketamine and I made some phone calls and left some messages while I was there. Uh, ketamine is a horse tranquilizer. I would just... You know, under, I, you know, I can't say I don't recommend it. I was just saying don't make phone calls, you know, that can ruin your life and your job and have you living at your in-laws, you know, way late into your 30s. So I did, you know, if there is a way to take ketamine responsibly, responsibly, then do it that way. Don't do it the way I did it. It was a just bad decision. So I, uh, 
because I was, you know, uh, intoxicated on the phone, it just put up some flags. Then they looked at some of the trades I made and I had been, because of my drinking, my drugging, done some things that were not, I took risks. It was never stealing or never, no one ever lost money. No one ever got, but I, I can't, how can I say this? I could be in jail if it was invested. I was, I was fired from the job because of the risks I took, put the company at. The companies made tremendous amount of money from what I did, but technically it was illegal. illegal. I used funds that were not settled. I was basically gambling with money that wasn't in the account yet. I was making money hand over fist. But I, I don't want to get into it. I did some bad things. I can't get... So the only career I've ever known, I'm pretty much blacklisted from. Um, like I said, I never stole a dime. I just kind of borrowed money. And... Uh, yeah, and I never lost any money. Everybody made money. If I had lost any money, I'd still be in jail. So maybe I should just keep. Uh, uh, I just could. Maybe I should just keep my mouth shut about that. But anyway, that's why I'm here. You know what? After that, I need to have a drink. That's my problem. I drink too fast too. But uh, oh, I needed that. So uh, oh, what else happened? So oh yeah, I saw. Uh, Ethan and, uh, and uh, Diversity in Comics, they're having problems with stalkers. Uh, at this point, I would probably, uh, I would maybe, I would, I would be uh, very accepting to a stalker. I mean, I can't even get my own, uh, my own shadow wouldn't follow me at this point. So I would, uh, even if it was a violent stalker, I mean, uh, at this point, uh, I would take a strangling just for the human contact. But this here, in these books I started reading, you know, some of them, the older ones from 1984, they were a little bit on the corny side. You know, they were good, but then, you know, they did like gimmicks, like Superman would use his cape as a net to take out three guys that he could do barehanded. Why even bother with the, with the, with the, with the cape? You know, corny, I didn't like that. But then this guy here, uh, George Burns, I mean, uh, John Burns, not the God, never mind. John Burns, he took over. And this was a very good issue. Oh, this I really liked. This guy here is the Phantom Stranger. And uh, Superman saves, uh, you know, oh, like I would love, does the soil remember? Oh, I wish I could do somebody like what a deep British accent. Um, would be great to play him. But either way, he, he drops a, uh, a magical stone and it falls into a potter's field for uh, executed felons. And it revives them all up. And it's all rapists and murderers. And uh, he has to go in. And uh, the Phantom Stranger goes in. It's great zombie drawings. They're all mad at the people who are alive. And he's like... Uh, and he's like... He, 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 oh, just whoever wins this... I wish I could do a better review. It's so good. There's a trial for the murderers. And... Uh, then the people that were murdered come, you know, they speak, you know, Phantom Stranger brings them up, and and uh, these guys are just really bad. So, anyway, I don't, it, it's just a good comic. Superman saves the day, as always. Then this was something great. This was Superman versus Orion, because Superman was taken over by Darkseid, and he became, he was just called the savior. He was, had his mind wiped. But here's the thing, while his mind was wiped, he was Darkseid's champion and he murdered thousands of people for Darkseid. So by the end of the comic, uh, Orion is using a mother box to restore his memory. And then he's pissed and he goes to you know take out Darkseid. He's really pissed at him. And, uh, you know, uh, Light Ray is just like, you know, uh, what happened? Oh, yeah. He's like, Light Ray is like, oh, you, he re you restored his memory. And then Orion's like, you know, uh, I didn't. I didn't restore all of his memory because I didn't want Superman to know that he mur murdered in cold blood all of those people. And he's like, no. He's like, he can bear it. He's like, he's a, he's a, a hero. 
And he's like, no, he is, he, it's not for him to bear such things. I am a warrior. He is something more special. He is a champion. So Orion never gave Superman back the memories of the murders that he committed under Darkseid's spell, which I thought was a really interesting concept. So anyway, anyway, whoever wants, I'll figure, oh, this is what I'll do. Whoever wants these comic books, and I'll throw in a bunch of crap too. I have to get a lot of stuff out of here. Whoever has the most, whoever leaves a comment in below. Also, could you do me a favor? Can you subscribe and like right now? Oh, I'm thirsty. Hold on. Well, there, there goes that one. All right. Hit subscribe and like right now. Share this with people. Not enough people are seeing this. I may have to get a proper job if I can't get a few million subscribers. I mean, I'm happy I got 350. That's nice. But it's, you know, it's a few million off of where I want it to be. Um, so whoever leaves a comment, whoever has the most likes on their comment by, let's make it December 24th. Christmas Eve, whoever has the most likes on their comment, I will make you the winner. I'll contact you, and I will mail you, free of charge, a big box of comics, including this 20-issue uh, run from uh, the 80s of the Action Comics. Uh, this I also picked up. I picked up. This is another one. I had Ethan's cover. He only did, a, you know, one issue in here. A lot of it was another artist, but it was still, it was actually very good. I have a lot. Oh, I got it. You know what? I'm going to do my next few. This is my favorite, of course, the greatest comic of all time. And I'm going to make it go up against, um, I don't know, maybe another Watchmen. Do you guys want to watch a Watchmen get shredded? Because there's no possibly way a, a Watchmen is going to beat America. So it's, do you want to see this one get shredded, Watchmen? This is Frank Miller Ronan. Do you want to see that get shredded? Nothing is going to beat this. This is the best comic book there is right now, you know, with, uh, with of course, uh, Iceman, a close second, and uh, Squirrel Girl, and Miss Mar uh, Captain Marvel. It's just, we're in the golden age of comics. Um, these are just the best comics ever being produced right now. So, what you tell me for the next video in the comments below, just tell me, do you want to see America demolish Frank Miller's Ronin, or... Alvin Morrison's uh, Watchmen. So let me know. And uh, Merry Christmas to all of you. And good luck in the contest. And uh, like and subscribe. Tell everyone you know. You know, uh, God bless. Merry Christmas.